welcome to another episode of Boxing with Ball. And today, I'm excited to bring you OnePlus's and 20 OnePlus's refresh to their budget 5G lineup. Let's take a look at it. Part of what has me so excited for this phone is the fact that it is a 5G device. It is 120 gigs of storage. It has six gigabytes of RAM paired to that storage, as well as, again, a 5G processor, um, NFC, Bluetooth 5.1, dual band Wi-Fi AC, and I'm trying to think what else doesn't it have. Um, but in the box, we got, it looks like legal and safety as well as a nice SIM injector tool. Let's put this aside. And it looks like the phone is set for right now. Wow. So we got a type, a very nice bright red type A to type C cable. Now, I believe the reason for this is that this is OnePlus's proprietary cable, which allows them to deliver 33 watts of charging via their power brick delivering those full 33 watts and again I'm gonna guess that is using only the proprietary cable as well as the proprietary wall adapter which is something that is very nice to see in an age where Samsung and Apple are taking away wall adapters OnePlus went ahead and threw in not just a normal wall adapter but a high powered fast charging one as well part of what makes this such a great phone is again the fact that it is a such a premium phone for a such a low cost for $289.99 and the next phone that I can find that compares to this would be the Galaxy A52, 53 or even 51 that all come in at $499.99 but enough about that let's go ahead and dive into this phone and as we can go ahead and get it open I struggled with that way more than I should have. Um, it is just a beautiful, beautiful looking slab of plastic and glass with a 6.43 inch screen. Uh, and this is no regular screen. This is a super AMOLED screen um, that comes in at 1080 by 2400. Uh, so it's quite a pixel dense screen. So movies are going to look great on this. Um, shows like Squid Games are going to look, um, you know, like the Squid Games are going to look great on this because of those dark scenes in there and this AMOLED screen. In addition to that, this does come in at 173 grams. So it's right on par with the rest of the phones in this category. And since we're up front, we do have a hole punch camera up here that comes in at 16 megapixels and it does only shoot at 1080p at 30 frames per second. So that's just a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, however, again, keep in mind this um, device price point at $289.99, that's really, really good. And that is one of those cost cutting measures in order to keep the price of this phone down. So now if we look over at the back of the phone, we have a triple camera setup in which we have our main lens coming in at 64 megapixels. I believe that's this top one right here because you can see that the, the actual lens is a lot bigger. And I believe the bottom one should be a two megapixel macro followed by a two megapixel depth lens as well as having our flash on the outside. And OnePlus is calling this blue smoke, although it does look fairly gray to me, but I guess in certain light, it does look like a silvery blue, but it nonetheless is a very, very nice color. And I do like the fact that it does have the IMEI written all the way down at the bottom. If we look over on the left side of the case, we're gonna see our volume down, our volume up buttons, as well as our SIM forward slash SD card tray. And finally, for once, I am not being driven up the wall because you don't know how many times I'm just trying to turn it up, trying to turn it down while on a phone call, while on a video game, while watching something, and I turn off the screen because they put 
they manufacture puts the volume and the power button all on the same side and that's just dressing up the wall but i'm very happy to see that oneplus kind of like apple is making very very good decisions when it comes to design if we go over to the top of the case, top of the phone we're going to see a pinhole microphone and if we go over to the right side of the phone we're going to see again our power button and again separated and completely on the other side of our volume buttons so we're not going to get them confused and if we do um, it's just going to be a simple matter of just getting used to and getting acquainted to which side they're on as it's going to be very hard to get them confused and then if we go over to the bottom of the phone we're going to see our cutout for our speaker grill a type c port one more pinhole microphone as well as our auxiliary jack Again, very, very nice addition to see whenever a lot of other manufacturers are actually, in fact, coming back and removing the auxiliary jack. As far as our operating system goes, we do have Android 11 right out of the gate. And again, I am very, very impressed at the fact that, so we have NFC, 5G millimeter wave, 128 gigabytes of storage, six gigabytes on the RAM, a 5G processor um, with that typical six by two configuration where six of those cores are clocked in at 1.7 gigahertz for efficiency and then the remaining two are clocked in at 2.2 gigahertz for those heavier more power intensive tasks and we're going to find out just how power intensive um, of a task they can handle with our geekbench um, score that we're going to our geekbench test mark excuse me that we're going to obtain a score from shortly after we run this test the website from which i was obtaining my information from had the incorrect number when it came to the six efficiency cores i mentioned they were at 1.7 while they are in fact at 1.8 gigahertz with the two remaining power cores clocking at 2.21 still true and accurate as the website mentioned so the, one of the very cool features that this one offers would be uh, an always on display uh, but i would imagine that definitely eating into your battery but since it has an amulet it ought to be fairly efficient compared to a normal LCD screen. Now let's go ahead and fire up the camera and see what that looks like. This is what a selfie would look like. All right, so then this is what a video would look and sound like on the OnePlus N20 5G. Um, I, I can't, can't tell, tell if I'm fuzzy or if that's just if I, if I just look soft. Um, yeah, it's all right. It's not, it's not the best camera, obviously, but we're not, we're not buying this one for the cameras, are we? Okay, and then let's go ahead and okay, and then this, this is what video looks and it sounds like on the main camera of the OnePlus N20 5G. I do not know what it looks like. We will see what it looks like as soon as the video um, is over. I am disappointed to find out that our camera does not shoot in 4K. Again, we're not buying this for the cameras, but it does not shoot in 4K. And our slow-mo is gonna be a 120 frames per second at 720p. So it's definitely not you know, anything to brag about. But again, keep in mind, this is 289.99, Super AMOLED, 5G, 128 gigs of storage with NFC. So you do have, you know, you do, you do have to give up some things in order to get um, some of those other nicer features like an AMOLED, right? So let's go ahead and finally fire up that Geekbench uh, test. And we will be right back with you guys as soon as this is over. So we are back. That took way, 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 way less than what I thought. It was actually fairly quickly. Um, I, I didn't even have time to go grab my phone and play something on it. Um, as we can see, we got a 666 da, 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 uh, number for the single core score, uh, which is actually quite high compared to, I believe, the 187, the 190 that we were getting just a year, year and a half ago, two years ago with uh, Galaxy A20. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start comparing the single core scores of the previous phones um, in a table shortly for you guys. In addition to that, we also have a multi-core score of 1975, which is again quite high. And if we go ahead and we compare our single cores to that of a flagship R, the Galaxy S21 Ultra comes in at 924. And again, for our 666, we're, we're two thirds of the way there again for a quarter of the price or a third of the price if you really want to be you know 
splitting hairs. Um, that's actually pretty flipping good. And if we go again to the multi-core score, we're at 1975 versus again, the Galaxy S21 Ultra is 3085. So again, we're about two thirds of the way there for a third of the price. That is pretty flipping good if you ask me. Again, also we have an AMOLED screen just like the flagship devices do. Uh, we have higher RAM, we have six gigabytes of RAM. We don't have quite that eight, 10, or even 12 gigabytes of RAM that those other phones have, but you don't really, you know, you're not really gonna be taking advantage of that much RAM in a phone like this, in my opinion, when you're doing fairly like gaming, when you're browsing Facebook, browsing the web, you're not, you're not really, you know, gobbling up gigs of RAM. And if you are, you probably need something a little bit more powerful in the next higher up price category. And that I'm just I'm fairly impressed again. 289.99, um, all the specs that you get, um, plus a wall adapter and a charger coming from OnePlus. Very very nice, um, very good. And I almost almost forgot to mention the fact that they do have an under display fingerprint scanner. So that means that you can unlock your phone just by tapping the screen, and it's going to read your fingerprint. So if you go over to passwords and biometrics. We can add a fingerprint. First, we have to add a password, of course. Okay, and come on, I just verified it. Okay, so I guess this fingerprint sensor is all the way down here. So you would acquaint your thumb or your preferred finger with a fingerprint sensor. You know, place this sensor in, okay. So you would adjust your grip just like on any other fingerprint scanner, just so that again, the phone becomes more acquainted with your finger. Okay. All right. Okay, we do not wanna use finger, we do not wanna use the face unlock. We just wanna use the fingerprint scanner. So that's fairly instantaneous. So I do like the fact that I don't have to tap the power button to get that going. It immediately, if I just, oh, earlier there we go so if you just go ahead and um, you go and you pick up your phone there we go that's pretty good so I guess the phone knows when you're picking it up it, it can you know it has sensors in there but um, it looks like even if you okay so I guess the screen does have to be either somewhat on or the phone has to realize that you picked it up in order for the fingerprint scanner to be activated. But nonetheless, that is still pretty good. And one last thing I did want to um, take a look at was just how good or just how bad that um, OLED is when it comes to viewing content on YouTube. So let's go ahead and... Hello, and welcome to another episode of Knock and Paul. Today, I'm excited to bring you the JBL Tune 510's JBL starter on your headphones. Despite them both having different um, color temperatures, this one seems to be just a little bit warmer, this one seems to be a little bit cooler. Um, in addition to that, probably their own software that they have going on for color enhancing. Despite that, it does appear like they both have fairly inky blacks, and this is an iPhone 12 that I'm comparing, comparing it to. Um, so it looks to be fairly good. I can't wait to try it out with, um, Again, Squid Games or watching a docu nature documentary by David Attenborough, something that's very nice, very colorful to really, really take advantage of that AMOLED and perhaps enjoy some HDR content. Let me know in the comments, what are your thoughts on this phone? Would you grab something like this? What do you think of the look? I think it's a quite handsome looking phone and it's, it's a really, really good price point for the price, especially for what it does. And as always, thanks for watching.